the work off California it started uh, back in 2004, 2005. There are these natural hydrocarbon seeps coming out of the seafloor. Basically, you could think of them like the La Brea tar pits underwater. So what we were doing is trying to map these and understand not only the sources and the amount of hydrocarbons coming out, but also how these hydrocarbons uh, help to support these exotic life forms that actually live on the hydrocarbons. The work that we did there was actually funded by NASA because NASA is interested in, in developing more advanced technologies to explore other planets and moons for signs of life. We would send Sentry out on missions to look for interesting locations that where we were found these volcanoes in the past and, and took advantage of its ability to travel far distances and take imagery. And then we would go back and at nighttime, evaluate and look at this imagery, and then plan our next Alvin mission. Alvin can't move very fast. So in reality, we're taking advantage of Alvin's capacity to collect samples with its big robotic arm versus Sentry, essentially is the equivalent to a drone. We call this the hunter-gatherer approach. We used the Tethys mass spectrometer on the Sentry AUV. Basically, the AUV would swim along and make a map of uh, areas where there were uh, increased hydrocarbon concentrations to uh, try and identify the source locations for those cold seeps. A mass spectrometer is a chemical sensor. It's basically a particle accelerator that can measure different kinds of chemicals. Typically, mass spectrometers are about the size of, oh, let's say, a refrigerator in the laboratory. I tend to work on small mass spectrometers the size of a loaf of bread and have a power requirement about the same as the light bulb in your refrigerator. What we found was these big mounds that nobody was quite sure what they were made of. But we went in with Alvin and with its big manipulator arm, just grabbed a big hunk of it. And it ended up not being a piece of rock. It was much lighter, much easier to handle, taking pieces that were three, four feet across. We brought it back to the lab and analyzed it, and it was old oil. This was an oil spill that happened 35,000 years ago. And looking at a piece of oil that had been weathered or been in the environment for 35,000 years, provides me great insight as to how much can nature beat up oil. When Deepwater Horizon occurred and it was, it was clear that amongst our colleagues that there was an underwater uh, plume or, or of methane and other gases, we essentially brought the band back together, took everybody who was on that cruise and did everything we did with Sentry again. You know, this was a nice opportunity of basic science coming right into play in an applied manner. To learn more about marine robotics, visit us on the web at www.whoi.edu/oceanrobots.